In this video, I'm going to be sharing some local updates and useful information relevant to the Papua Nui area in Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, I'm also going to be speaking just very briefly to a topic uh, that's been getting a bit of attention recently, which is housing intensification, and particularly how that relates to our local area and to Christchurch, uh, what the current environment is and what the outlook is. And I'm also, I'll be happy to answer any questions, I'll take any feedback in real time while we're uh, while I'm on live. Kia ora, I'm Simon Britton, I'm the curator of Think Papua Nui. Uh, I've been running this page for about five years now, uh, and it's all about keeping the local community connected, sharing local news, letting people know what's happening with council and community board, uh, and other local useful updates. Hope you're finding it useful. I haven't been on video for a little while, so kia ora if you're a new follower of Think Papua Nui. Nice to meet you, and I'm just hoping everybody's doing okay under our current circumstances, uh, having been in uh, level four lockdown for a few days now, and with a little bit of an uncertain outlook as to what this coming week might bring us. Um, just before I get too far into this video, I'm just going to check my dashboard, make sure that my uh, settings are looking all right. I've made quite a lot of changes to the technical setup for my videos since last time I was online, so appreciate any feedback. Hope you're hearing me okay, hope you can see me okay, hope everything's in sync and uh, everything's working. Uh, this video will be available on Think Papa Nui's Facebook page after the event, so you're welcome to leave me comments or ask questions later and I'll get back to those. It will also go up on my YouTube channel or the Think Papa Nui YouTube channel. Uh, so if you're watching it there, again, you can leave me a comment there or get in touch in a range of other ways. I'll come back to that uh, later in the video. So let me just see what's happening on my dashboard and what we're going to talk about today. Cool. So you should be able to see up there somewhere uh, topics for today. Uh, some information around essential services in Papua Nui. I'll come on to that uh, topic of housing intensification and any Q&A that comes up during this time. Uh, so firstly, um, just going to pop across to Think Papua Nui's website. So if you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, just be aware at thinkpapanui.nz uh, is the website where uh, all of Think Papua Nui's posts also turn up. Uh, and you can see here, just as I scroll through, uh, you know, some of the more recent posts I've put up, a number of those have been around uh, COVID and also uh, there's a post there on what was coming up at the community board meeting that was held on Friday. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about at the moment is just this top story here, uh, which is a page that I had up last year during our level four and level three lockdown, just as a, a one place to go uh, for people if you're looking for local information on what's open and when is it open uh, in our local community. And by local, for me, the focus here is Redwood, Northcote and Papua Nui, not just the suburb of Papua Nui, but that whole local government ward of this area. Uh, I've been running a page called Shop Local, which has been a bit of a directory of local businesses. I've just pulled that offline at the moment because that is more relevant when shops are open. Uh, at the moment, um, we can head to thinkpapanui.nz uh, slash COVID-19 uh, or there's a menu right at the top of the page here as well. So if you head to thinkpapanui.nz uh, one way or another, you can navigate to this What's Open page. I'll also include a link to this uh, either above or below the video, depending on what platform you're working on uh, and watching this on, so you can find it later as well. Uh, so firstly, just at the very top of that page, there's some key messages there uh, and some links to uh, what I've called Get the Facts. Uh, I'm not uh, trying to take the place of any official sources of information, so uh, the top links for me uh, here are New Zealand Government, so of course the COVID19.govt.nz website, also the Ministry of Health website, uh, and also the FO of People in Christchurch. Uh, there's a direct link there to all of the uh, COVID-related stories published by Christchurch City Council. Uh, the rest of this page is information that I'm curating, and I'd love some feedback on this, and I'd love any additional information. I'd love to hear what else you'd like to see, and of course if there's any errors on this, uh, it'd be great to hear about that as well. Uh, so a couple of disclaimers at the top, of course, uh, doing my best here. This is a, a best efforts volunteer initiative to uh, try and help the local community stay informed and connected. Uh, so there's a bit of information there uh, around public transport. What's happening at Alert Level 4 is uh, buses are running to a Sunday timetable every day. Fares are not required and boarding and uh, on and off the buses at the rear door. That's to keep people away from the driver, of course, to help improve safety. Uh, if you do have a disability or for other reasons need to access at the front door, let the driver know. I understand that is still possible. More information, again, you can click through to the Metro website for some more details there. 
uh, Northland Shopping Centre, uh, they've put up a very helpful post, which I've linked to, uh, which talks about the fact that pretty much everything at the centre is closed, with the exception of essential services, which is the pharmacy and the two supermarkets. At this stage, uh, ATMs, I understand, are also accessible there for people who rely on cash. Uh, hours of shops, uh, as of last time I updated, checked and updated this this morning, um, to my knowledge, Pack and Saves hours are unchanged, 7am to 11pm. Countdown hours have changed a little bit. The details are there. I've just pulled that off the Northlands Facebook page. Uh, these kind of things could change from day to day, uh, so I'll keep this as updated as possible, but I'd also caution people to check ahead or maybe just double check, if, uh, particularly if you're trying to get somewhere just before closing or right on opening time. Uh, other things that will be open in the local area, uh, and I haven't got details up at the moment because it's a little bit complex and the uh, situation's still changing. Veterinary clinics, uh, if you've got an animal emergency, in general what I found last year was that vet clinics were still operating. Uh, generally on a call ahead basis, don't just turn up and obviously not for routine things but for anything urgent or critical. Uh, and of course medical care, um, where's my mouse gone? There it is. Uh, GP services and pharmacies still open. Again, in general, you're going to want to call ahead. What I found last year and what I noticed around our neighbourhood was some pharmacies uh, were open. They'd have a sign on the door saying, you know, one at a, in at a time where they were serving customers at the door. Uh, at least one that I recall from last year had the door locked and a sign on the door saying phone this number if you need help uh, and they would be in a position to help. But taking obviously great care around uh, safety and the health precautions around that. So again, if there's a specific uh, service that you're looking to access around medical care pharmacies, my advice would be call ahead and just check out what's happening. Uh, the other one I've got on there at the moment is service stations. Uh, in general, uh, I understand service stations will be open. Of course, uh, none of us should be driving particularly far, but perhaps you're an essential worker or you just do need to get to the shops if your gas tank's getting empty. Uh, that's something that you will need to uh, need to address. So in general, uh, service stations are expected to be open. Um, this is a bit of a work in progress, as I note there. Uh, if there's something else that should be on here, uh, if there's something that's wrong, please do let me know. Uh, it's really easy to get in touch. You can do that if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. You can get in touch with me on those channels. Uh, there's also a contact button up here on the top of the website, which is also linked to down here. So in general, there's a bunch of ways uh, you can drop me a line. Uh, please do let me know if anything needs to change. Let's just come back up here. So that's it on essential services in Papua Nui at the moment. As I've said, I will keep that updated and I will um, yeah, add things or change things as best I can. Uh, if we come out of levels four and three reasonably soon, that page will likely go away again because it's, it's really only during this time that it's most relevant. Uh, next one there is on housing intensification. Uh, now this is a pretty hot topic uh, for a lot of people across New Zealand and it's it's the topic that uh, housing intensification really is is a strategy to provide provision of housing in New Zealand that seeks to balance of course the provision of housing but also the impact on community when lots of houses get built in a small space. I will um, flip back to my web page again and change web pages. Let's just come across here. So I published an article uh, let me just jump across to it and I'll explain where we are. Published an article the other day on uh, housing intensification. So uh, one of my roles as well as uh, doing this Think Papua Nui role on a voluntary basis, I am a member of our local community board, the Waipapa Papua Nui Inus board. Just recently we received a briefing on housing intensification and council staff are doing a bit of a roadshow at the moment. They've been uh, speaking to the um, Urban Development and Transport Committee of Council and also all the community boards to uh, really outline what the current regulatory environment is with respect to housing intensification and also a couple of key changes that are on the horizon. And that's really been a response to uh, community concerns around uh, multi-unit developments and intense developments in residential areas. So 
Uh, if you're interested in that topic, I'd encourage you to, um, I'll include a link to this as well, and likely I'll do a, a specific post on Think Papanui about this. Uh, this is on my personal website where I tend to write longer form articles and a bit of opinion and commentary. Uh, so this is at simonbritton.com. Uh, and from the landing page there, there's a, a blog and media link. That's one of the easier ways to find it. Uh, and you'll find a list of articles there uh, on a range of topics. Uh, there's one I wrote there for the spin-off that was published last year on the Cranford Basin area and what's happening with housing regeneration there. Uh, short answer is not a lot at the moment. Uh, and if the, the answer to the question why not is it's kind of complex, but I do go through that in that article. Uh, my most recent post on here has been around specifically around this briefing on housing intensification. Uh, so there's a, a link there, you can watch the briefing to the uh, Urban Development and Transport Committee. Uh, and then down the page embedded here is the video from our Community Board's Facebook page. Uh, we do live stream our um, community board meetings and this briefing was also live streamed. Uh, we do that on a uh, bit of a budget DIY basis, it's no cost to the ratepayer. Uh, we bring along our own equipment for that and it does have some limitations, uh, including uh, this was a bit of a low resolution video so apologies for that, but the audio is reasonably good when you're listening to the council staff giving the briefing. Uh, and if you'd like to follow along to the slides, I've included the slides here as a PDF. Uh, if I click into that you can see here uh, quite a few to go through and you can just uh, click along and, and have a look at those slides uh, while listening to the briefing uh, or you can um, refer, refer to those, let's just pop back, uh, as you look through some of the notes I've made and I have haven't written extensively on this but I've just uh, shared my own notes from that meeting uh, starting at the top of the bullet points there. Uh, one of the really interesting slides in that briefing was this, uh, it's a heat map showing where intensification is happening in the city. Uh, this is from the date range uh, 2016 through 2019. Uh, and the, you know, the, the red uh, areas of greater uh, intensification uh, and you know, white is a little bit of it and the rest is not happening. Uh, so you can see there's a bunch in the central city. Uh, hopefully you can see my cursor. Uh, but what's really interesting is this dark red, dark red patch here. Again, if you look at the slides, you'll see this in better detail. Uh, that's St Albans. Uh, if you look up here, Papua Nui, uh, it's a bit of a, uh, there's a bit happening in the Papua Nui area. If you've been driving down Hillwood Road recently, you will have seen the uh, Mike Greer development being advertised just at the railway line, uh, in, which is possibly going to be the biggest in the area that I'm aware of. Uh, but there's a lot of smaller de developments happening as well. A uh, few bullet points down, again this is taken from the presentation so you'll be able to see this in more detail. Uh, this wiggly line is uh, the net gain in new housing per year specifically through intensification through multi-unit developments in Christchurch. Uh, the line here is 1000, uh, up here is the long-term target uh, which is at 1500. So you can see since 2012 through to 2020 kind of linear growth there, a few ups and downs, but we are um, building multi-unit developments in Christchurch. We're pretty much approaching now the ta council's target rate and the reason the council has a target is uh, council's responsible for managing land development and you know, meeting population growth requir requirements. Uh, somewhere in these bullet points, if it's not in these bullet points it's in the slide or in the presentation, uh, talks about the growth that is needed uh, growth in housing stock that's needed to meet population growth over the next 30 years. So that's really the long-term view that the council's taking. Uh, some of that growth can happen through renewal, some of that growth will happen through uh, expansion of the city, greenfield developments, but a significant part of it does need to come from intensification, otherwise we're just sprawling which has a whole lot of negative impacts uh, of its own. A uh, bunch more comments there and also a question at the end. I love some feedback uh, on that page at the bottom of that article uh, around uh, what your thoughts might be on the current rules and the current environment, what's happening, what are you seeing, how do you think it's impacting uh, our city, how's it impacting you, but also uh, the uh, content of that presentation and my notes there also cover the national policy statement on urban development and also the upcoming uh, or the now starting to happen reform of the Resource Management Act. Uh, so we are interested again in thoughts in terms of uh, what you might see, uh, what you what you see is uh, what might be the impact uh, longer term as well. Um, so that's um, those top two uh, 
uh, items on uh, my uh, list of things to talk about. Uh, just going to pop back and see um, what's happening on my Facebook page. And I've got a question here. I'm just going to take a minute to read. So let me just pop up to that and that. Uh, anything going to be done on the impact of traffic due to intensification? Great question and a significant uh, issue of concern to the community board and I'm just aware I'm wearing a community board hat as well as a, a Think Papua Nui hat. Uh, Langdon's Road, yes, might attend intersection, Chapel Street. Uh, absolute nightmare, comments this person. Uh, I totally get that, I move through that area a lot. Um, still park along both sides of the road. Yeah, more stuff is coming. What's it going to take? Thank you, uh, Sari, is it? Um, appreciate your comment and your question. Uh, so probably easier for me to comment uh, about that a little bit more wearing my uh, community board hat. Uh, so um, the community board and our local traffic engineer uh, putting a bit of thought and doing a bit of background work around those issues. Uh, really seems like, uh, you know, we've seen constant growth in traffic in that area and it started you know, actually well before Kmart opened up because we had uh, all the uh, sort of office development that has already taken place on the former uh, Firestone factory site there. Uh, things seem to be getting busier down the Northlands end. We've had, uh, for example, a Langdon's Quarter development there. Uh, we've now got the, um, more recently, we've got the North Link shopping centre opening up. And even more recently than that, uh, while we've seen a few shops move from sort of the Northlands end of Langdon's Road up towards North Link, we've also seen new things open up, uh, such as uh, most recently the uh, trampoline centre in the former warehouse station rebuilding. So all of those factors are coming together to make a a super busy environment uh, and that's an issue we see that as an issue um, for the functioning of traffic in the area for the safety of pedestrians crossing the road we've got obviously the high school there as well uh, we've got a number of aged care facilities not too far away uh, we've got cyclists using that road etc uh, etc et uh, under construction now you might also have seen uh, the Braintree Centre and the Cancer Society are both building facilities uh, in the back of the Firestone site uh, which again you know, more, you know, great developments more and more uh, uh, traffic and uh, you know, intensity of use of that space. Uh, as a community board, we've been talking to council and advocating for traffic controls down the Greers Road end of Langdon's Road. That's one part of the picture. There's no answer for that yet. There's a bit of a work in progress. Uh, there are some steps likely to be taken in the shorter term around pedestrian safety crossing the road. Uh, there is going to be a bit of a look at the, uh, the roundabout at Sissons Drive uh, Restall Street, Langdon's Road, uh, and also the um, crossing at the railway line is also a concern there. We've got a major cycle route, the northern line, uh, right there where also there's a lot of foot traffic crossing the road because of the school, so crossing safety there, also an issue. Uh, so not a lot of answers right now. Uh, it does have a, a high priority with the community board and also with our local councillor, uh, so probably the best thing I can say there at the moment is uh, keep watching this space. Uh, I would encourage anybody who sees particularly safety issues in that area, specific in incidents, or if you uh, see something about the layout or the design of that area that you think is causing ongoing safety issues, I'd really encourage people to report that it's directly through to council. You can go to the City Council website uh, and use the contact form on there. You can just phone the call centre or of course you can use the Snap Send Solve app. Uh, and the more feedback the council gets and the more information about how that environment is impacting people, the easier it becomes to justify taking some actions and frankly spending some money is what's going to be required to improve that area for people who are using it. So uh, yeah, that would be my other that would be my suggestion. Uh, my, yeah, my answer in terms of what's happening is watch the space, things will be happening in that area and there's some thinking going on. In terms of what you can do in the short term, it would be keep feeding back to the council. Uh, that's pretty much us uh, for this video. I'd just like to thank you again uh, for tuning in if you're watching this live or for watching this after the fact. Uh, if you are watching this later, either on YouTube or on uh, Think Papua Nui's Facebook page, feel free to leave a question or a comment. I will still read those and I'll be able to respond to them. Uh, if it's been useful um, for me to give this update, I'd appreciate hearing about that. And uh, yeah, please do have a look on thinkpapanui.nz slash COVID-19 to have a look at that what's open information. Again, really be interested in uh, feedback on how useful that is and maybe what else should be on there. And absolutely, if there's anything that needs correcting or updating, please leave me, uh, please leave me that information as well or, or get back to me on that. 
So thanks very much. Appreciate you uh, following along and I will um, probably be back on video again soon. And of course, I'll be continuing to post news and stories on Think Papanui. Kia ora.